This is the third video in a series where I try to solve some problems about finding or problems where it's good to find an invariant. Um, I ended the second one in a slightly strange way, getting stuck on a problem. Uh, it's now the evening of the same day <laughs> and um, not terribly surprisingly for anyone who's had, um, struggled with a math problem. It's been difficult to avoid thinking about it from time to time as I've been going about my daily activities. And at some point I had an idea. Um, unfortunately, that means that I've had an idea that I've not recorded have myself having uh, on video, but I'll try to explain how I had it. Um, but before I do that, let me share my screen and um, remind or explain what the, what the problem was. So the problem was that you have um, a rectangular grid of numbers. I think I drew one up here somewhere. Yeah, so like that. Um, so, and they're all positive integers. And there are two things you're allowed to do. You're allowed to multiply a row, everything in a row by two, or subtract everything in a column, or subtract one from everything in a column. Those are the allowable moves. And what you're supposed to try to do is get everything down to zero. And an important observation I made when trying to do it was, if you ever get zero in a, a row or column, um, well, if you get, sorry, if you get zero in a column and you don't get the entire column to be zero all at once, then you had it because you can never change that zero to um, anything other than zero. You're not allowed to make it negative or even if you did, it would go on being negative uh, more and more negative as you multiply by two and subtracted one. So um, if you make this zero, um, you'll, you won't then be able to make it the rest of the column zero. So if you make part of a column zero, you've absolutely got to make the whole of the rest of the column zero at the same time. Um, <clears throat> and the, the idea I had was, I can, so here's how I had it. I thought, you could, one thing you could do is just multiply everything by two. And if everything's even, my first thought was, well, it makes no difference at all because instead of subtracting one, you can subtract two and uh, doubling, um, you can double. But then I suddenly noticed, well, actually that's a slightly silly thing to say because you have actually got slightly more flexibility than you had before because you don't have to subtract two. Um, you could just subtract one. And going back to the situation, the dangerous situation, if you've got one in a column, you're basically forced, unless everything else is one, to um, multiply that column by two. Um, but if, if, you, if everything was multiplied by two, you would have the option of reducing that column by one. And so then I thought, well, okay, if, what if you multiply by two lots of times? Um, then it sort of, if in, I mean, one way of saying it is if you double everything, um, then you get to subtract one from everything that's doubled. But another way of looking at it would be to say you could just keep everything the same, don't double everything, but allow yourself to subtract a half if you wanted to. And then pursuing that thought, uh, if you multiplied everything by say 32, then you'd be able to subtract an arbitrary multiple of one over 32. And that led very naturally to the idea that perhaps one should, um, well, that actually the problem's equivalent to saying you don't have to subtract one, um, from everything in a column, uh, you could allow yourself a bit more flexibility and subtract an arbitrary rational number whose denominator is a power of two, and those are known as dyadic rationals. So one could allow oneself to subtract an arbitrary dyadic rational from any column. And having had that thought, a natural thing to try is the same problem, except instead of saying that your um, the numbers are integers, let's say that they're real numbers, and instead of saying that you double a row or subtract one from a column, you let's say you could double a row and subtract whatever you like from everything in a column, whatever you feel like subtracting. And if one could, so that would be a problem for real numbers. I don't think that is equivalent to the original problem, but if one could solve it, maybe one could then go back and sort of notice that actually it was never necessary to subtract anything that wasn't a dyadic rational. And so in this um, video, I just want to pursue that idea see if it helps. If it doesn't help after a, little, a few minutes, I'll just abort the video and uh, because I haven't got too much time at the moment, <laughs> or this evening at any rate. Um, so I just want to do that. So let's go back to the example I had of, say, 
five, one, one, three, that sort of example, and just see whether things seem to be a bit easier if I'm allowed to subtract whatever I like. It doesn't have to be one. Um, so I, at the moment, um, doesn't seem massively helpful, but uh, if I were to double the top row, I could get it to, or well, let's say I multiply the top row by, um, I'll multiply it by something quite big. So I'll multiply it by eight or something. So we get 48, one, three. Now a situation I noticed last time was a good situation is if the ratios of the, if the two ratios are the same, but if I'm now allowed to subtract whatever I like um, from a column, then we can see that it's actually rather easy to make this ratio 40 to one. I just subtract whatever I need to subtract to make the ratio 40 to one. Um, and that's, a, that's a, an annoyingly boring calculation to do. Uh, so better do it. So eight, eight minus X equals 40 times three minus X. Uh, so it looks as I may not get a, a dyadic rational, unfortunately, but uh, I feel this idea is nevertheless sort of promising. So if, uh, I want 120. Uh, I said 120, but wrote 128 for some reason. So 120 take away 8 is going to be 112. And I'll have 40 minus 40x taken over here. So I'll get 39x equals 112. Uh, so x equals 112 over 39. So I can subtract 112 over 39. That's not even right what those numbers are going to be. I just know they're going to be some number w and 40 times w. And I should be in good shape now, yes, because now I can just subtract. Um, I could even maybe generalize a little bit more and say I'm allowed to multiply a row by whatever I want. But um, perhaps I won't do that. I'll just say that now we're now that we've got these two ratios to be the same, I'm back to the usual case, or back to the old case where I've effectively just got a single vector. If I if I only allow myself to do operations on one vector, then I'll just do the same operations on uh, the other column. And so I'll get that if I get this one down to zero, I'll get automatically get this one down to zero. Uh, if I do the Actually, which moment? That's not quite right because if I subtract one from, or well, subtract something from top and bottom, and I subtract this, oh, I see. Then I just subtract something different. I subtract the corresponding multiple from here. Uh, so that looked promising. Let's just see then if we can. Um, supposing I had three columns. What would I want to do if I was allowed to multiply by two, any row, um, and subtract whatever I like from any column? Um, so I was able to make the ratio, I was able to make two columns multiples of each other. Can I make the third one a multiple of these two? Um, I have a slight problem there because if I sub, I know, wait a minute. I don't see why not actually. Uh, so what I can do is the following. Yep, this looks okay. I just take whatever column has the biggest ratio. So let's say it was 40 to one. Then I can subtract something from, First of all, I make sure that B is bigger than E and C is bigger than F. I can do that by multiplying A, B, C by two enough times. So then I can subtract something from B, E to get the ratio to be uh, the same as A over D and C. If uh, I subtract something to get that ratio to be the same. So this real version of the problem, um, which I, I know is going to be a little bit tricky to make work because of this um, 39 and not, I mean, because it, I don't seem to be able to guarantee that I can do it with 
dyadic rationals. I can just do it with rationals, but uh, not dyadic rationals. Uh, do I, does this approach work if I allow myself, if say I take two columns now, but this time they have length three. Um, am I going to have a problem getting those ratios to be the same? Um, that looks a little bit less obvious because when I subtract one from everything in a column, it's not clear that I can, in fact, the, the way I, the only reason I was able to make this work was that 40 and one, if this is a, a different vector, I can find some multiple of this and subtract a multiple of one, one and get a multiple of this. So I, I needed somehow that this vector here, five, one, was in the subspace generated by one, three, and one, one. Uh, or rather, I needed that 48 was in the subspace generated by one, three, and one, one. Or rather, so let's go back to what it was, it was 48, one, Three. Now I needed 41 to be in subspace generated by 8, 3, and 1, 1. And that is not always going to be the case if I've got vectors of length 3. So that's actually um, not, so, not so helpful. Um, I'm actually now um having uh, explored that idea a bit uh i had an unfortunate experience um just before coming up here which was that i uh, glanced at comments on the video the last video i put up and somebody had um put a comment that actually gave a rather useful hint which i've ignored so far but um, I think it's, it's getting to the point where I just can't really ignore it, but I can't claim to have thought of it for myself. So here's an idea or an observation. Uh, I haven't read the full comment, but this you know, stopped as soon as I noticed that this was a, a, a potential, just this sentence was a potentially useful hint. So that what I got out of the very brief glance was the idea of looking at each column, I mean, look at the columns one at a time, and suppose, so just notice, supposing we could make one column consist of zeros, then by induction we'd be done. If the rest were still positive integers, um, we're going to be okay because if this column consists of zeros, then whenever we, we, we can just, we can just promise never to um, multiply this column by, I mean, never, sort of never to subtract one from everything in this column. And then every time we multiply by two, it just has no effect. So if we can get rid of one column, then um, as I say, we're done by induction. Um, so let us just, an obvious thing, if we're going to think of an inductive argument would be just to say, well, let's suppose we only have one column. Let me just try one, three, nine, 17 or something like that. Can we do it there? So what are we allowed to do here? We're allowed to multiply by two and subtract one from everything. So multiply by multi any of these numbers by two. So let's just make them all fairly similar. So I'll multiply that by two four times and I get 16. I'll multiply this one by two twice. So I get to 12. I'll multiply this one by two once. And I've got 18. Now I'll do a major lot of subtraction. So I'll subtract. 11 from everything, so I get 5, 1, um, 7, 6. And now let's get back to multiplying by 2 a few times. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll rewrite it here. So this 1, maybe I'll make it up to a 4, 5, 7, 6. And let's do another round of subtraction. So I'll subtract 3 from everything, so we get 2, 1, 4, 3. 
Uh, let's do some multiplication. So I get two, two, four, three, and now I can subtract one. I get one, one, three, two. Multiply those two by two, 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 three, two. Subtract one, 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 two, one. Multiply those things by two, 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 two. And then we can subtract one and subtract one, and we've dealt with that column. So all that we've got to make sure is that, actually, there's just nothing to make sure. Okay, so unfortunately that hint just does solves the whole problem. Uh, I'm slightly, I don't know, I don't know whether I'm annoyed with myself for not spotting it, I just went down a different path. So why does that solve the whole problem? It's because while I'm working on this column, there are two things I'm doing. One is multiplying things by two, and the other is subtracting one. When I multiply by two, I'm not, there's no danger of making anything zero over here because I'm multiplying positive integer by two. When I'm subtracting one, I'm not even touching this part of the matrix. So I can just uh, work on that column. So actually, once I've proved that I can make a single column zero, um, I've done the whole thing. And um, uh, and I think I've effectively, by this example, I haven't quite given a proof that you can uh, make a single column zero, but I think I almost have. So here's my algorithm. I suppose I've got A1 up to An, and I want to make it zero. The two things I'm allowed to do is subtract one from everything or double something. So my algorithm will be, if I ever have a one here, I'll turn it into a two by doubling it. And otherwise I'll subtract one from everything. So I would look at this and uh, any ones I'll turn into twos. So I've got sort of B1 down to Bn. And then uh, now I subtract one from everything, B1 minus one, Bn minus one. And the sum is going to go down. Oh, maybe that was the invariant idea. So after two of these steps, so when I multiply by two, obviously the sum goes up. But if I then uh, subtract one, well, I only ever multiplied one by two in this algorithm. So the one would go up to two and then back down to one. And meanwhile, some other things come down. So the sum goes down, except in one situation, if I started with entirely ones, then they would become entirely twos and be entirely ones again. But if I've got entirely ones, my algorithm says, oh, in that case, we subtract one from everything. So actually, <laughs> I think, uh, hmm, what can I say? I can say that, uh, I feel slightly misled by the fact that this problem um, came in a list of problems where you're supposed to find an invariant because I thought as a result of that, that somehow I needed to find some really clever invariant that was going to um, sort of tell me how to do everything. Whereas in fact, maybe, maybe perhaps there is such a way, but uh, in fact, this, this proof that I found here with the help of a fairly big hint was, um, actually something that uh, where it was sort of just performing what you needed to do on one column that you know it was fairly easy to find how to do it and then the proof that it worked so the proof that this algorithm actually terminates um, it's rather easy to identify a quantity that keeps decreasing Okay, oh, I'm glad I've got that question out of the way now. Uh, and I will stop this uh, video. Maybe I'll sleep better tonight. Um, so uh, I will continue with these. Uh, I've got up to exercise eight out of 60. I don't know how far I'm going to go, but definitely beyond eight. I don't want to stop on that particular note. Thank you very much.